In the heart of the Philippines, a spectacle of terrifying beauty is unfolding. It stands as a near-perfect cone, the postcard image of a tropical paradise. But this majestic peak is a killer, and it's waking up. In recent days, its slopes have become rivers of fire and ash, unleashing a relentless barrage of superheated avalanches. This is the Philippines' most active volcano, Mayan, and it is on the brink of a major eruption. The numbers are staggering. In surges of intense activity, the volcano has unleashed dozens of pyroclastic flows in single 24-hour periods. At one point, 90 separate events were recorded in a day. This onslaught has forced more than 3,500 people to flee their homes, abandoning their lives and livelihoods to the mercy of the mountain. An alert level three is in effect, a stark warning that a hazardous eruption could be just days or weeks away. This is the story of a geological titan stirring from its slumber, the science behind its deadly power, and the thousands of lives that hang in the balance, caught in the shadow of the perfectly coned killer. The first week of January 2026 marked a dramatic turning point. On January 6th, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIVOLX, raised the alert level from 2 to 3. This decision wasn't made lightly. It was triggered by a clear and dangerous signal, the repeated collapse of the summit's unstable lava dome. Think of a cork being slowly and unstoppably pushed out of a bottle. That's essentially what's happening. Magma, thick and degassed, has been quietly rising and piling up at Mayon's crater, forming a dome of new, unstable rock. As this dome grows, its own weight becomes its undoing. Gravity takes over and sections of the dome break off. And that's where the real danger begins. These collapses aren't simple rockfalls. They become pyroclastic density currents, or PDCs, what locals call USON. On January 6th, a PDC generated from one such collapse traveled down the Banga Gully on the volcano's southeastern flank, a sign that the eruption had entered a new, more dangerous phase. The days that followed painted a picture of a volcano in constant, violent motion. The numbers from FIVOLX read like the drumbeat of an impending catastrophe. Between January 12th and 13th alone, a staggering 206 separate rockfall events were recorded. On the same day, 63 PDCs cascaded down its slopes. This was an increase from the 37 recorded the day prior and approached the peak of 90 PDCs witnessed in a 24-hour window just days before. Cumulatively, the volcano was shedding hundreds of these deadly flows. The volcano's breathing grew heavier. Sulfur dioxide emissions, a key indicator of magma near the surface, fluctuated but hit levels like 777 tons per day on January 10th. Gas plumes rose a thousand meters into the sky, drifting over surrounding communities. Then, in the dead of night on January 13th, at precisely 1.39 a.m., Mayan offered a stunning and terrifying preview of its power. For 35 seconds, a fountain of incandescent lava shot 100 meters into the air from the summit crater. It was a brief but potent display, a reminder of the immense pressure building deep within the volcano's plumbing. All the while, instruments on the ground confirmed what the eye could see. The volcano's edifice was inflated, a sign that magma was continuing to push up from below. The activity is relentless. It's not a single explosive event, but a continuous, grinding process of growth and collapse. The new lava dome at the summit glows with a faint menacing light, visible to the naked eye at night, a constant beacon of the heat and energy churning within. Each glow, each tremor, and each pyroclastic flow is another sentence in a story building towards a violent climax. To understand the threat of Mayon, you have to understand its nature. It is a stratovolcano, one of the most beautiful and most dangerous types of volcanoes on Earth. Its perfect, symmetrical cone, rising 2,463 meters above the Albay Gulf, wasn't built in a day. It's the result of tens of thousands of years of successive eruptions, each one adding another layer of hardened lava, ash, and rock. This layering process gives it a classic shape, but also makes it inherently unstable. Mayon exists because of its location. It sits squarely on the Pacific Ring of Fire, a hotbed of seismic and volcanic activity. 
Specifically, it's part of the Beekle Volcanic Arc, a chain of volcanoes created by a process called subduction. Here, the massive Philippine Sea Plate is slowly sliding underneath the lighter Eurasian Plate. As the oceanic plate dives deeper into the Earth's mantle, immense heat and pressure melt the rock, creating magma. This magma, being less dense than the solid rock around it, then begins its long journey to the surface. This process has made Mayan the Philippines' most active volcano, with over 50 recorded eruptions in the last 500 years. Its style ranges from gentle lava flows to catastrophic explosions. But the most immediate and lethal threat in this current crisis is the pyroclastic density current. So, what exactly is a PDC? It is definitely not smoke or a harmless cloud of ash. A PDC is a ground-hugging avalanche of superheated gas, ash, and volcanic rock moving at terrifying speeds. They can race down the slopes at over 100 kilometers per hour and reach temperatures of up to 1,000 degrees Celsius. They are silent, fast, and utterly unsurvivable. The PDCs at Mayon right now are mostly caused by the growing lava dome at the summit collapsing. As chunks of the dome break away, they disintegrate into a turbulent, dense current that is heavier than the surrounding air. Propelled by gravity and the rapid expansion of hot gases, this current hurtles down the volcano's steep ravines. The 40 or so gullies that radiate from Mayan summit act as natural cannons, channeling these deadly flows directly towards the lowlands. The danger doesn't stop there. Mayan has a second weapon in its arsenal, lahars. These are violent, fast-moving mudflows formed when heavy rainfall mixes with loose volcanic deposits on the slopes. The tons of ash and rock currently being deposited by the PDCs are fresh ammunition for future lahars. The weather forecast, which includes periods of rain, presents a secondary and equally deadly threat. Even if the eruption were to stop tomorrow, the danger of lahars would persist for months or even years. In 2006, a typhoon triggered massive lahars on Mayon that buried entire villages and killed over 1,200 people. A stark reminder that the volcano's threat continues long after the ash has settled. For the world, Mayan is a geological wonder. For the people of Albai, it's home, it's a source of life, and, paradoxically, a constant threat of death. The same volcanic material that makes its eruptions so deadly also creates incredibly fertile soil, drawing generations of farmers to its slopes. This fatal bargain is at the heart of the human story of Mayon. With Alert Level 3 raised, the government has strictly enforced the 6-kilometer radius Permanent Danger Zone, or PDZ. Entry is forbidden. This is a non-negotiable boundary drawn by decades of scientific observation and bitter experience. As of early January, official reports confirmed that 3,516 people from 964 families had been evacuated from this high-risk area. More recent figures show the number of affected individuals has climbed to over 4,100 as the situation evolves. Thirteen barangays, or villages, have been emptied. Families gathered what they could and moved into 14 different evacuation centers, schools and community halls repurposed to house the displaced. The government and aid agencies are providing assistance, but life in the centers is difficult. Classes have been suspended, and hundreds of police officers have been deployed to manage checkpoints and secure the evacuated zones. The evacuees are farmers who have left their fields, families worried about the coming days, and children whose lives have been turned upside down. They're caught in a state of suspended animation, waiting for the volcano to decide their fate. Health is a major concern. In crowded shelters, sickness can spread quickly, and the stress and uncertainty take a heavy psychological toll. So why do people choose to live in such a dangerous place? For many, it's not a choice, but a legacy. Their families have farmed this land for generations, their identity tied to the mountain that both nurtures and threatens them. They understand the risks better than anyone. They know the moods of the volcano, the direction of the gullies, and the meaning of the faint glow at the summit. Leaving isn't just a matter of moving house, it's abandoning a way of life. The fear of the eruption is matched by the fear of economic ruin. 
A farmer forced to evacuate at a critical point in the planting or harvest season faces losing everything. This creates an agonizing dilemma. Stay and risk your life or leave and risk your livelihood. That's why, despite the clear and present danger, authorities must maintain strict patrols of the PDZ. The pull of home, of crops in the field and livestock in the pen is a powerful force that sometimes overrides the instinct for survival. The residents of Albai are not ignorant of the danger. They are resilient people who have learned to coexist with a giant. But this coexistence is a delicate dance, and right now, the giant is leading. The current activity at Mayon isn't happening in a vacuum. It's just the latest chapter in a long and violent history. To understand what might happen next, we have to look to the past. The volcano's historical record is a catalog of destruction that serves as a grim warning. The most infamous event in Mayon's history is the cataclysmic eruption of February 1, 1814. On that day, the volcano unleashed its full fury. It belched a dark column of ash and rock high into the sky, and then pyroclastic flows swept down, burying the town of Kuksawa. An estimated 1,200 people perished. Today, all that remains of the once thriving town is the stone bell tower of its church, protruding from the ground as a solitary haunting monument to the volcano's destructive power. The 1814 event was a Plinian eruption, the most violent type, and it transformed the fertile landscape into a desolate desert of ash. More recent eruptions provide even more context. In 1993, an unexpected explosion generated PDCs that killed 77 farmers who were working on the volcano's slopes. The 2018 eruption was another major event, featuring lava fountains, large ash columns, and extensive pyroclastic flows that led to the evacuation of tens of thousands of residents. These events show a clear pattern. Mayan can produce sudden explosive activity with little warning, and its pyroclastic flows are a consistent and primary killer. Today, scientists at Five Volks are in a high-stakes race to forecast the volcano's next move. They're using a sophisticated network of instruments to monitor every tremor, every shift in the ground, and every puff of gas. The Mayon Volcano Network consists of 16 seismic stations that track volcanic earthquakes and background tremor. Recently, these stations detected a sharp increase in seismic energy, a sign of magma on the move. GPS and tilt meters measure ground deformation. They're essentially checking the volcano's pulse. The data showing that Mayon's edifice is inflated confirms that magma is pushing up from below, causing the ground to swell. Scientists also analyze the gas emissions. Spikes in sulfur dioxide can indicate that fresh, gas-rich magma is getting close to the surface. This data is all used to define the alert levels. Alert level 3, where we are now, means there is an increased tendency towards a hazardous eruption. It means a magmatic eruption is already underway, and a bigger explosive event is possible within days to weeks. If the situation gets worse, Five volts will raise the alert to level 4, which means a hazardous eruption is imminent. That would trigger a much larger evacuation, likely extending the danger zone to an 8-kilometer radius or more, and could displace an additional 79,000 people. The signs for that escalation would be a dramatic increase in the frequency and reach of pyroclastic flows, sustained and powerful lava fountaining, and major changes in seismic activity or ground swelling. For now, scientists are watching and waiting, caught in the same suspense as the residents of Albai. The volcano is following a script written in the language of geology and fire. The question on everyone's mind is how this act will end. The fate of the more than 4,000 evacuees and tens of thousands more living nearby rests on the subtle shifts of the earth beneath them. Mayan volcano is a force of nature in its rawest form, both a creator and a destroyer. Its perfect cone is a testament to the constructive power of volcanism, but the glowing dome at its summit and the searing avalanches that scour its slopes are a stark reminder of its destructive potential. The science is clear. The volcano is in a critical state. The dome is growing, collapsing, and regenerating in a dangerous cycle. 
Each day brings a new tally of rockfalls and pyroclastic flows, pushing the boundaries of what the local communities can endure. While scientists hunt for any sign of a catastrophic escalation, the people of Albai wait with a mix of fear and resilience, their eyes fixed on the majestic, menacing peak that has defined their lives for generations. The story of Mayon is far from over. The giant is awake, and no one knows when it will go back to sleep. For ongoing coverage and in-depth analysis of significant geological events like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel. And if you have insights or personal stories related to man, share them in the comments below. Stay informed and stay safe.